Oh boy, guys, we got a fun one for you. Right, Fernando? Oh yeah. So about six, seven months ago, we had a black Camaro come in here. I don't know if we filmed it or not. Either way, it was an older Camaro, and by old, I mean it was like three, four years old. The customer decided that he wanted to upgrade to this new, sexy 2017 white one. Oh yeah. Well, it's got the new factory radio on it. And they don't make a dash kit for that yet, as could be expected. So what are we gonna do to this thing? It also doesn't have the premium sound system. So it's got speakers in the door, speaker in the dash, speaker in the rear side panel. The rear deck speakers are for the factory premium sound system, which it doesn't have, that's cool. So one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna add some roadkill. We have the new or current roadkill black stuff. And then they just came out with this new stuff here, which has the foam on it. So it's this same stuff here, plus a layer of foam. We're going to probably put this on the rear deck, even though we're not putting any speakers in the rear deck. When we tap it, it makes a bunch of noise. So we'll probably put some of this back there. PDX V9. For right now, the plan is to go with the Kenwood Exelon 7 inch. Both these are the rears, the coaxles. And then we also have the components we're going to put on the front. So the tweeter will go on the dash, mid range in the door. And then last but not least, this guy right here. That's right, the DM 608 audio control. We're going to put this guy in. Awesome, right? Everything's going to be handled through this guy if you guys aren't familiar with this this has this is an EQ crossover processor so it's got an EQ crossover it'll take high level in it'll take low level in time correction and you use a laptop this guy to set it which is probably the only bummer they're coming out with a Bluetooth module so you can use an iPad soon one of the selling points of this is that he'll eventually be able to toy with it himself if he wants we're not gonna push that the plan is this we're not pulling the factory radio out because we really don't need to we're gonna go into the kick panels we're gonna grab the mid-range wire there to feed into our 608 we're also going to grab the rear speakers once we pull those out we'll run our wires back we're gonna run a new set of wires forward and then we'll also run a set of wires up for the two Tweeters. It is going to be a passive system. I mean, we're going to use the crossovers that come with the Kenwood speakers. It's not a full active system. The PDX V9 is only a five channel amp. This is what we have in the trunk. So they've changed the trunk around in the 2017s. It now has these funky side panels here. They've taken the battery out of the floor and they've moved it over to here. But we have this area here, which I'm guessing this would be, this is how it came. So I don't know what's missing, but either way, probably gonna take this out, build a panel, mount everything right here. It has this and it has this, which are cool tunnels. So you can run the wires up. So they actually, that's really cool. So this is where the you know power wire will run through. Instead of a lot of cars, they just look like this here. And you know, then we would have had to run the wire all the way around here because it would have gotten crushed there a lot of people do that and it's like why so I'm pretty excited to be working on this one we've used the 68 we haven't filmed it yet because we wanted to play with it a lot get to know it a little better we get to show you guys the 608 actually working so that'll be fun well let's stop talking let's just get working on this thing ready Fernando ready, sir. awesome let's get going So all the bad legs are apart. We're gonna use the roll kill with the foam. So it's actually, if you hit whatever, it's plastic with foam, it's gonna be good. Let's do it. Quick update, we have the back of the car apart. We're going ahead and installing the padded roadkill on the rear deck. It's a pain in the butt. There's almost no room here. I don't know what Chevy was thinking. It's almost like not even having a back window. Yeah, here, check it out. Very small amount of space. We've gone ahead and got all the side panels out. Let's go ahead and take a look at those real quick. So they've mounted the speakers to the side panel. So 
Here's what you have. This is the six and a half that's mounted into this side panel here. We don't know if we're gonna be able to do the sevens. Might end up just doing the sixes. We kind of knew that going in from the get-go because we hadn't seen it yet that that might be the case. Go ahead and take a look in the trunk. I have the amp board made. So we have all the side panels out. There's a ton of space here that is just totally wasted. I'm guessing that, and maybe another option, there's something that goes there. That's a ton of wasted space. Here's the battery. Uh, the battery has this little cover right here. There's two little clips that slides off. This is definitely going to be the bolt where we're going to attach to. It has one of those standard GMT nuts that pretty much suck. It does also have two open fuse holders here. There's a 100 and a 60. There again, probably for some other form of an upgrade. But here's the amplifiers. So it has all these little fingers sticking up like these right here that are like for bolts. They're 10 millimeters, so we went ahead and put the risers on there so that there's actually space here. And then one of the bolts that was holding the foam in, we're able to repurpose here so that'll hold this whole plate in place. We'll be able to get to the amplifiers controls here, as well as the Alpines have all those plugs that plug in, so you need a little bit of extra room here. That'll be good. And then the process will be mounted right here. So with new cars being as fun as they are, one of the things that we want to test in this car is the sound output, meaning what's coming from the radio. Is it different when the speaker is connected, when the speaker is not connected? So now that we have the rear speakers out, one of the tests we want to do is take our RTA and hook it up to the left and the right. One with speaker, one without speaker. And then compare the two side by side and see what that signal looks like. Some cases, you're going to get a totally different sound out of the left from the right when the speaker is not connected and that has to do with the load from the speaker onto the factory radio. We want to compare those two and see what they look like. So we've gone ahead and done that. Let's go take a look at it in the car. So in this case, they both look exactly the same. Whether the speaker's connected or the speaker's not connected, the radio's putting out the same sound. That's good. The other thing too is if you notice towards the sub side, there is no base. So the rears are definitely have some form of an active crossover on them. So we're either going to have to hope that the fronts have more base coming out of them and or we're really going to need this EQ. Now once we get the front doors off, we'll do the same thing. So it has this jute, this is called jute, covering where the speaker grills are. Now what we want to do is go ahead and remove the jute so that the subwoofer, the sound, the air from the subwoofer has some way to get into the cab. There you go, we've added in the foam, the rear deck is complete. So that'll go ahead and force all that air up through the rear deck and not trap it inside of the rear deck. Let's go ahead and get the rear deck in. Now the one thing we didn't mention is the subwoofer we're putting this. He just wants one 12 inch type R and a ported box. That actually will fit right in there and go all the way forward, not take up all the trunk space. Plus it's a really small opening. It's even smaller than the previous versions. The 112 just happened to fit pretty well. But we'll get to that in a little bit. All right, so we have our amp and processor mounted into the board. All we have to do now is of course get it wired up, but what we're gonna do is run the RCAs out of here into here. We have these guys here. These are the new audio control AC LGDs. What these are is these are load resistor. Well, it's not really resistor. It's a whole little, well, all right, I'll just read what they call it. It's a Zobel network. What they're using it for is load resistance. And the reason why is because a lot of these radios have either class D outboard amplifiers or class D internal amplifiers. And when you disconnect the speaker, the signal coming out of the amplifier tends to get a little unbalanced, unhinged, and it causes a lot of high frequency distortion. So when you add in something like this, it's designed to put a resistance back into that factory amplifier and put it back in control. Seeing how this is a new car, more than likely it has a class D amplifier. We're going to go ahead and install these. We'll show you how to put them in. It's pretty simple. If it needs it or if it doesn't need it, it's not going to cause any issue. So for example, if it needs it, it's going to be great. If it doesn't need it, it's not going to hurt anything because the amplifier is used to seeing some form of load anyway. If you want to err on the side of caution like we're doing, then you want to go ahead and put these in. Now, there are some restrictions as far as how these things can be mounted. And of course, 
this is the instructions. The packaging material is the instructions. And they have a whole section of do's and do nots. So you're gonna wanna read these. Basically what it says though, is that don't bury these under carpet, put them in a well ventilated area. So we're gonna actually mount them right here so they're easy to get to. When you're putting in one of these DMs, they use a different plug. Now the amplifiers also use these. These aren't just gonna plug in like they would on a regular like an LC7i, LC8i. So you are going to have to do a little bit of rewiring into this harness here. The nice thing about the type of connections that these have is that if you've already put in like an LC8i, 6i, 7i, LCQ1 or the DEQ, you can just go ahead and plug these in with these jumpers. So you can always add these after the fact if you do notice some form of high frequency distortion. Now they come with this block of foam attached to it. That's what they're attached to here on. We're gonna go ahead and put some more double-sided tape on them so that we can stick them right here. We're gonna go ahead and unscrew this end and add in that so that we can have these hooked up. And then of course we'll put this end back on here so that we can plug our new wire into this. They are directional, so when mounting them you want to keep that in mind. And it, it shows you right here. According to the instructions, factory amplifier outputs are going to go here and off to the LC, or in this case the DM, are gonna go here. Keep in mind if you were to unscrew these off of here, they're not marked positive and negative anywhere along here. They do however match this side here. So as long as you have one of these with these wires still on them they will match the other thing too is that these will match the same pattern as the LC's so just something to keep in mind and a lot of times just go at these and then you're like wait a minute there's no markings on here what this is all right so we've decided to add the crossovers back here we're gonna go ahead and get those attached all right so we're all set let's go ahead and start wiring this thing up We got this thing done and all set and ready to go. We have the Alpine amp mounted. We have our load resistors. We have the EQ processor. The crossovers are all set. We have our two umbilical cords that are gonna run off. So here's what we have for the rear speaker. It's, as we showed earlier, this is, this is what we got going on. We wanna get this guy off. And it's just held in there with four seven millimeters. Go ahead and pull those off. And what we have is this, this POS right here. It's got some foam on it. It's got a nice riser on it. The thought is we can either just swap it out for this six and a half, but we really want the Kenwood seven inch to go on there. So I've come up with a plan. The seven inch come with those giant plates in the box that you know we've showed before. And if you remove all of the external stuff, you end up with this guy here, which is just a trim bezel. And what this trim bezel is designed to do is take it from a six and a half up to the seven. So six and a half, seven. I was comparing the sizes. They're very similar in depth. So in the speaker, the seven inch is only like an eighth of an inch deeper than the factory speaker. So so what I'm thinking I can do is just grind these lifters down some, patch this to it, and put the seven inch on. Now the other plan we wanna do is take this piece off here, draw it on some of the roadkill, and then reattach it. And we'll go take it in the car and see if it fits. All right, it fits like a glove. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and remove the speaker back off. Fernando's gonna go ahead and put the road kill onto the door panel here. Then we're gonna go ahead and road kill in this so no, there's no air leakage. We'll put some foam on it and we'll get this sucker done. So we got the roadkill with the foam backing here instead of the white stuff. We've gone ahead and added some of the roadkill around here to seal that off and make it nice and airtight so that'll force all the sound in. We're gonna add some foam right here, screw the speaker in, and get this guy back in the car.
Now, people often ask, what's the deal with the Tessa tape? Why wrap all the wires in it? But if you see right here, all the factory wiring is wrapped in the same stuff. So by us wrapping our wiring in it, it basically camouflages it into the factory look so that it looks as, as in place as possible. Alright, so we've gone ahead and grounded it using the factory ground point and also mounted the fuse and ran the wire up to the battery. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull the wire through the factory housing here. And then we have to figure out some way to put a quick disconnect here for the subwoofer because he wants to be able to remove the whole wire and everything. done here is we ran two wires over here one of them this red black is the signal wire that's going to be tapped into what was plugged into the speaker then the 16 gauge here white this is for the actual output of the amplifier to the speaker so we didn't have to pull the radio out we're just actually getting our rear signal here at the rear speaker and then we ran a new wire for that Fernando just called me over to take a look at the driver's front door. We have that off. Let's go take a look at it. So it's a factory six by nine-ish, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Do we have the adapters? Yes, we do. What you got there? Is that a Metra? That's a Metra, yep. Oh yeah, look at that. So we still have to road kill this, get this put on there. Let me get you the part number for that. So those are the 823017s. So if you're doing one of these and you're watching this video, you know which ones to pick up. I'm assuming they'll probably fit in the very back too, but we're not putting speakers back there, so I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, so we have the road kill all mounted, all sound deadened around the speaker. So we have the Metra, then we have the seven inch to six by nine adapter screwed into that. And it's all covered in road kill, of course, so it's nice and deadened. A little bit of foam. We have the plug in the back for the fast rings. Then we added some road kill inside. This guy is all set and ready to go. Only one left in is the tweeter and the dash. We're gonna pull that real quick. So let me show you how we get it out. Cause these things, they, well, they suck. On the A pillar, point to the, the little, that thing right there, the clip. So that clip right there is going to slide out like this. And then the A pillar will come off. Then there's a seven, seven millimeter screw here. You have to pull the side panel off. And then this whole big cover comes off. I know, right? Isn't that crazy? Then I clip the little sensor. Be careful not to scratch this area right here with those wonderful metal pins. And then here is your speaker. So on the driver's side, the screw is actually here, right at the corner of the dash. So it's really, really tough to get out. Here it looks like it's gonna be a little bit easier. This is where a skew driver comes in handy. This is the dash speaker here. We went ahead and got them out. What we have is this tweeter here needs to mount. So what we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and router out some of these guys here to mount this tweeter in the center of it. So for this, we're just gonna use two pieces of eighth inch Centro. Go ahead and tape them together. Now what we wanna do is, cause this is the first time we're doing this particular speaker, is we're gonna go ahead and make a template out of this speaker. For that, we're gonna grab some half inch. We keep the centers out of like the six by nines and six and a halves for doing little things like this, cause it's scrap so it'll fit perfect. All right, there we go. 
go. Let's transfer it over. All right, all set. Now we just want to find the center point. Now we just need to make a hole for our tweeter. So we have our tweeter mount all set and ready. We're just gonna add some connectors on it. We're gonna end up running a whole new set of wires. We're not gonna be tying into the factory, so we're just gonna run tweeter wires up. So we're just gonna go ahead and tape this up, put some ends on it, and get it ready for the dash. All right, so we have everything mounted. You can see this guy right here. That's the factory screw. We went ahead and made a mount for his tow hitch, and that's also using one of the factory screws. So that's back in. That was the only piece that was part of the foam that we took out. Well, that's all retained. So over here, we went ahead and added in the speaker cup by his request so that he can pull the whole wire and everything out of the car. So in the box, there's two pieces of paper. This big one here that is like, holy crap, if you miss this, you must be blind. And it says, not so fast. So what you wanna do is go ahead and before you install, definitely go over this. Uh, it has a bunch of good points. One right here, be sure to configure your crossovers in the DM. Smart DSP application before connecting to your amplifiers. This is important if you're not going to be using the crossover on the amplifier and wanna use the cool, way better crossover in your DM. The easiest thing to do is just leave the amplifier either the RCA's or the power for the amplifier disconnected so that you can set up a few things on this before you actually get to the amplifier. I will say audio control has a bit of a sense of humor. It's dry like mine. The last thing it says here is be sure to drink your Ovaltine. I personally feel they should probably put Tang on there, but you know, hey. The other thing that comes in the box is the installation guide. Now I say installation guide, they call it a quick start guide. It is an extremely quick start guide. I mean this, so it walks through what all the things are, but this right here, this is all you get for setting up the EQ and crossover. This is what you get. You get two pages here that walk you through some of, well, they don't walk you through anything. You just get these two pages here. What that means is that you may want to do what they're talking about here, which is be sure to go to knowledge base. This is where they keep a lot of their technical stuff. And you can go there and check to see if there's anything that you might find useful for one, your car or two, your installation. All right, let's go ahead and get over to the car now. Oh, one last thing. In the box is this guy here. This is your USB. This is what you're gonna plug into your computer, micro USB on one end, and of course a standard USB on the other. All right, so what we wanna to do to check what we just talked about is, first off, we wanna unplug the amplifier just like the instructions said, because we haven't set any of the crossovers. We have no idea where the gains are in these yet, so we've just gone ahead and plugged the amplifier all together. Now, if the red light comes on, that means that this is getting signal. And how we can verify that is with our PAA3 RTA. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can also just put a speaker on here and see if you get sound. So we're having sound, so that's a good thing. So now we'll go ahead and get this plugged into the laptop. All right, so our USB is right here, which means it's all the way down here on the bottom. Uh, the, little, the little fangies on the USB, those go up. So just go ahead and plug that in. So the first screen we're looking at is input, then we have output, then we had dashboard view. Dashboard view is an overview of everything. If you read the instructions, you saw that. Input view, you can take a look at what signal's coming in. We want to concentrate on output view at the moment, and we want to come over here to channels one and two. First thing we want to look at is output summing. This has a four channel input, meaning just front and rear. We already know that the rears had some form of a crossover on them, because we saw that in the RTA. So we're going to pair our five and six channel, which is our subwoofer, to channels one and two. Now we want to come over here to output, select one and two, and then come over to this portion of the screen and select the crossover frequency. The top is already predetermined at 20,000. We'll come over here and we want to set this for 80 hertz at 12 dB at the moment. We'll come over here and go to 3 and 4. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to set this to 80 hertz and return. And then we'll come over to 5 and 6. What this does is this gives us a high pass and low pass just like the other. So essentially you get like a subsonic filter here. We're going to move that all the way down at the moment. 25 at 12 dB. And we're going to go ahead and set our low pass to 80 hertz. 
And they're giving you a graphical representation of it right here. So this is the sound that the sub will play. These are the sounds that the rear will play. And then the fronts are basically the same. And there again, we've talked about why we pick 80 hertz. It's just a default. That's probably not where it's gonna stay. It just gives us something to set up so that we have a starting point. Now, if you go back to input, this has input sensitivity. We need to, like if the amplifier is clipping because we have too much input signal coming in because the amplifier output is too much, we can go ahead and turn that down here. And of course you can repeat that on all the channels. You can adjust the speed of the graphical representation here. So you can make it more manageable. 70 is default. Turn it up to 50, it's pegged. Turn it down to 90, you don't see anything. 80, it's gonna keep it at a minimal. Uh, and what you're basically using this for is some form of a line to help you level it out. This is gonna be fast. This is the speed. And then over here is the delay. So if you have any delay, input delay that you need to take care of, you can do that here. You can go back to here. We can select auto, select the channel, select auto. Uh, optimal results are obtained when when pink noise is being played through the speakers, our output RTA is not clipping, RTA is shown sufficient levels. So we'll go ahead and select yes. Now what that's gonna do is analyze that input signal and try to set a, do you accept this? We'll go ahead and select yes. Now what this has done is this has gone ahead and set in a curve. This is what helps you, this gives you a, a place to start. Now we can go ahead and do the same auto EQ setting on the rear. Now these are all things that you can do, like right now, the, the sound isn't even playing in the car. What we're trying to do is just get a some place to start in the car so that once we take this into the car, we're at least at a good zero point. We're gonna probably adjust, well we are gonna adjust all this, but this at least gives us a good floor in which to stand on. You also have AccuBase level here. Once we get in there and we see what it's doing, we can adjust the AccuBase. Let's go over here to dashboard view. All right, so what this is showing us is this this is our input RTA and this is our output RTA for whatever channel we've selected. This is the helpful part. Of, this is the awesome part of this right here. So if we come over here and we'll go to one and two. So now we can see this is what we have going into it and this is what we have coming out of it right now. So we have a much flatter, nicer looking signal than this. We want to take this now into the car, start actually tuning it while we're in the car. This is just the first step. I know, right? It's that time again. We're going to go ahead and play our polarity checker. We have our tools. Here you go, Fernando. I have mine. You hear the popping sound? Let's see what we got. All our speakers are moving in the same polarity. All right, so. We're in the car finally, and we have the laptop. What we went ahead and did is measured our points from our head out to the speakers. We went ahead into this portion right here. You come up here, you select what channel, and you can tap on it and pick the actual, what you think it should be. So we'll type in 43, we'll hit enter. Come over here and we'll pick 59, and we'll hit enter. We'll switch over to three and four. We already entered them there, and then of course the subwoofer already did that. Since we have that done, we can come in and go back to dashboard view and we turn the subwoofer all the way down now what we want to do is just go ahead and listen to it and we have the auto eq setup so we have a basic eq setting in a minute we'll go ahead and bring in an rta and see what it looks like i just want to hear the bottom end coming out of these mid-range to see if we need to bump up the crossover point any <laughs> Now up here, this yellow light that keeps flashing is the clip indicator. That's the input clip indicator. Different types of music this is gonna blink at. When we were playing pink noise, this wasn't lighting up at all. So it really is gonna vary depending on the songs you're listening to. We also have the gains on the amplifier turned all the way down right now, so we don't need necessarily to get too much volume out of the radio, because once we figure out where this clip point is, we can go ahead and turn the gains up from there. All right, so playing a few songs, we've pretty much figured out that this radio is good up to about 38. You know, once you're playing music and pink noise, there's a definite difference there. And this, this one is definitely, 38 is the number to be at. So now at this point, we can actually go back and give us some gain. So we can bring the amps up now that we know where this output level is. Quick note, you can have all the coolest tools in the world. You can have this cool laptop, you can have DD1s, you can have RTAs, you can have scopes and meters and, and all that neat stuff. And, and yes, it all serves its purpose, but at the end of the day, it's your ear that is what makes this all come together. It's that perceived sound, because that's what you're doing this for. You're doing this for your ears. So you have to use them and 
you know, I, I, understandable that yes, your ear isn't always going to hear clipping, your ear isn't always going to hear distortion, but most of the time it gets pretty close if you know what you're listening for. I mean, I have this little yellow light here that I can look at that's telling me when it's clipping, so I know when there's bad sound coming into it, and I can listen to the sound and hear when things aren't going the way they're supposed to. We have it about where it needs to be right now. I'm just going to listen to it again and check. But I have to say, if, if you guys have never heard these Kenwood 7-inch speakers, these things are awesome. The mid-bass that comes out of these, I've said it before, is incredible. So now what we want to do is we want to try to tune the EQ more towards what he listens to. When we got into the car, he had the EQ set up. So when we got in, he had the mid-range down a little bit and the treble turned pretty much all the way up. We can leave this the way this is, meaning we have it to where we think it sounds pretty good and just allow him to come in here and bump the treble and decrease the mid and allow him to tailor it to his personal needs right here. That's up to you. If you want to make it so that you get this as flat as possible, and then you can use this EQ to fine tune it, that's totally acceptable. It's there, it's usable. If you wanna do everything 100% through this, you can also do that too. That's entirely up to you and how you wanna set it up for you and or your customer. Now, Audio Control makes this guy right here, which is the iTest mic. Uh, these are really cool because you can use your iPhone or iPad, it is only for an iDevice, I'm sorry. You can mount this right where your head goes and use your phone as the RTA. Obviously an iPad is a little bigger. If you guys have watched these videos we have shown this before you do just download the audio control app plug it in and you have yourself a great little rta to see the output signal so on this we have the three rta trifecta where we have the input signal the eq'd output signal and now we have the actual sound coming out of the speakers that our ears are hearing so we can see what that looks like Playing with this a little bit, we notice that if we turn the bass down a little bit on the radio, it actually helps the signal quite a bit. We went ahead and ran a little pink noise, looked at it here. There's a dip in the 500 hertz area, which I like to turn down anyway, so that looks good. Otherwise, this is about the curve I like to set to, so I, I think we're good. Uh, we're gonna play a little bit more songage here. go ahead and there again we just did a major change so we want to come into here and we want to hold it and we'll click yes and there again now we've saved that setting all right guys this was a lot of fun we hope you enjoyed it as always did you have a good time always man it's nice when they let us do what we want in cars exactly. it's a lot of fun we're gonna let you guys go you guys have a great night as always we'll see you later next time bye All right, so we just finished. We test bumped the woofer for you guys. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull the USB cable out. So if you're wondering what this blue wire was here, that's just a USB. We didn't actually leave that in there. So we'll go ahead and pull that through.